No intro. I started studying English. So I started back from scratch. You know, I had, went, uh, they paid for a tutor. And I went from, like, English 101. And that, I went through that in a couple of months. Then, and then I got another guy with whom we, I expanded this. We had conversations rather than working from a textbook. And I, and I worked like a maniac. I threw myself into the study of, of, of uh, uh, English like you wouldn't believe. Um, and, and my inspiration came from Vladimir Lenin. I had read somewhere in a book that when Lenin was uh, in exile, he studied German. And he learned 100 German words every day, new German words. So I started reading newspapers, and every word that I didn't know, I wrote down on, on an index card, uh, German, English, and, uh, and I piled them up. And so I really learned 100 new English words every day. That's impressive. Personally, I don't think I could learn 100 new words a day just for retention reasons. But I like what he said there about having conversation as opposed to just learning out of a textbook. I found that when I was learning language in school, for example, there was a disconnect between knowing many vocabulary words and actually being able to use those words in sentences in the country that speaks that language. I also think the use of note cards is really underrated. For the past maybe 17 months, I've been studying Portuguese. And I definitely write things down in note cards and then have a tier system of which pile of note cards to use. I could probably make a whole video on that, so I'll just skip that part. And although in Portugal you can get away with speaking Spanish or English or Portuñol, which is a mix of Spanish and Portuguese, just as you would hear Spanglish being a mix of Spanish and English, for me it is a fun hobby. And I like listening to audiobooks in the other language if I can't speak it directly with someone who is fluent. Or another immersive way to learn a language, I think, is through music and looking up the song lyrics, translating them, trying to sing the song, etc. Do you guys have any other language learning hacks? Also, if you have a song in another language, any language, please link it down below. I'll check it out, and I would love that. Every day, I know this because I counted them, and I had a system how to do this. Uh, uh, so you take your index card, and you have five categories. It's a really good way to learn rote by rote. Uh, so you got category one; that's the new ones, and you got category five. So you start with uh, with five. Five you already mm -hmm. had right four times. Mm -hmm. If you have it right again, it I goes, into, it goes kind of into the archive. <laughs> oh, love it! Like long-term cold archive, yeah, yeah. Four, if you get it right, mm -hmm. it goes to five. If you get it wrong, it gets relegated to three. Mm -hmm. So and so you go through this, and uh, um, and occasionally I would throw the archive things back into one. So I really, I really acquired a phenomenal vocab vocabulary when I was done with. I'll have to try that. With my English, my vocabulary was significantly higher than the average American because I, I, I didn't discriminate. Whatever word I didn't know, I learned, which is not necessarily the best way because, you know, English has a lot of synonyms, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, and one synonym is usually the the preferable one. And and I, uh, when I first interacted with people, I very often used the one that wasn't as good. And people found that, that I, you know, I have an interesting way of talking. They didn't know what that meant, but. Yeah, well, so it builds a good foundation for a language, just getting oh, a oh, large yeah. vocabulary. Yes. It's really interesting. There's something I do, which is called space repetition, which is a programmatic way of doing this kind of system that you've developed yourself, uh -huh. which is if you successfully remember a thing, it's going to be a longer time before it brings it up to you again. Yeah. Now, that yeah. requires a computer to keep track of the right. information. If you have cards, that's a really interesting pile system. One, two, three, four, five, you upgrade it, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe I wouldn't go to the archive and go to num to, to pile one right away. Maybe no, maybe five. Go to like, four. I don't know, yeah. pi pile five perhaps is probably the right place to put it because you have to go through that full step again. But that is a really powerful way to uh, learn 
definitely language, but also facts, like people that go to yes, medical school. Yes, different disconnected and, facts. Yeah. Uh, and, and you pretty much, when you're done, you, you know what you know. Yeah. You don't but have then to. Then again, to use it, to integrate it into the music of language, that's more difficult. That's what yeah, you're talking exactly about. Yeah, right. exactly there, right. There's a charm. I mean, I, maybe it's not good for spycraft, but there's a charm to this kind of, to having an accent and using words incorrectly but confidently. There's a, because language isn't a simple formula. Language nope. is the play of words. So yeah. actually using the incorrect synonym, it, you know, as it, it uh, you know, if instead of saying I'm cold, saying I'm chilled. I'm yeah. frigid. Like using offbeat words can actually be part of the charm. So it's interesting. If you can learn how to use that correctly. Because uh, I've known a bunch of people with a Russian accent, and I feel like they mm. get get away with saying a lot of ridiculous shit. <laughs> because they're able to sort of leverage the charm of the uh, non sequiturs. Uh, by I, the way, by the way, just one one thing um, that you talked about uh, using a computer. When I had my first uh, personal computer, I actually wrote a program that does that. Towards the end, he made me think of a question. What accent do you think people accept most or find the most endearing in your language? So, for example, in English, I think a lot of people really like the Italian accent because it sounds attractive in one way or the other. Either it's cute when someone says something that didn't make sense. We're like, oh, but that accent. Or it can be seen as very sexy or at least as far as television shows portray it. And in Spanish, I love when a French native speaker speaks Spanish. I think it sounds adorable, but also interesting. And I love the way the some of the letters sound off of the tongue. If you haven't seen it, I recommend the Lex Friedman podcast. He's a bit of a nerdy Joe Rogan, which is actually where I was first introduced to him. He's into engineering and science, psychology, sociology aliens, <laughs> and he does have a variety of guests, everything from music producers to singers to physicists, and in the case of Jack Barsky here, a former sleeper agent of the KGB. So it's really a, a spectrum of people he has on. I think there's a lot of value in these longer form podcasts. You just have to sacrifice a good two to three hours. For today's literary recommendation, I actually first heard of this book through an episode of this podcast, and it's called Deep Work, Rules for Focus in a Distracted World by the author Cal Newport. And it really did change my personal approach to focus and information intake. I can appreciate a book that gives actionable advice and suggestions for how to learn a new skill at any age, regardless of how much time the person has available. I do think there is a free audiobook version on YouTube, so as always, if I can find it, I will link it for you along with the title. So, please drop some foreign music for me down below. I'll love to check that out. And that's all I've got. Thanks for watching with me.